Hello families, are you ready to go? We are here for Ridge Kids and it's the last week in February and I hope you've joined us for the other messages. If you haven't, I'd encourage you to go back and watch those and listen to those. Um, But we're looking at how should we live if we're followers of Jesus? So with our older kids, that's talking about respect. Um, And this week we've got a special message that I think you're really going to enjoy. And for our younger Ridge Kids, junior age, preschool, toddler, L, or, uh, kindergarten, we're going to start with you guys off, and we're talking about how much Jesus loves us, and that he loves us no matter what, uh, and he'll always love us. And that doesn't mean we can just go and like live life however we want, and, but it means that like no matter what we do, that Jesus loves us, and that he's with us, and he's encouraging us. And just allow him, I want to encourage you, just allow him to transform your life. So I hope you enjoy the service. Uh, be together as a family, whoever's with you, friends, neighbors, whoever's in the room. We'd love for you to do church together uh, online today. So I'll check back with you at the end of the service, and I hope you enjoy it. How deep, how wide, how long is the love of Jesus? How big, how high, how strong is the love? Jesus, Jesus is my friend for life, and I know I will never be without Him. I'll never be. Jesus is my friend for life, and I know I will never be without Him. I'll never be, never be, never be, never ever ever be, never be without Him. I'll never be, never be, never be, never ever ever be, never be. left the door open. A squirrel must have gotten in and chewed up my box of candy hearts. That squirrel made a mess everywhere. I'm so mad at Luca for leaving the little door open. This mess is all his fault. 
I'm not going to invite Luca to my party anymore. There are candy hearts everywhere. Be mine. Sweetheart. Love you. I should change these to read mad. Who? Who? It's Ollie. Hello, Poppy. Who? Who? Let a squirrel in, did you? Hi, Ollie. Luca is the one who left the door open. Now everything is messed up. We all make mistakes. It's true. Jesus teaches there's something we can do. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? I've got a Bible story for me and you. Hola, friends. It's good to see you. My name is Luis, the handyman. <laughs> I was just fixing this box for my nephew. He collected so many candy hearts that the lid broke off. Oh, but look at this. Look what's on the inside of the lid. It says, Jesus loves you. Yes, he does. Jesus loves you and you and you. Which reminds me of our story today. Do you want to help me build it? Oh, great! Let's put it on the story fence. Hammers up, little builders. Ready? Uno, dos, tres, hammer! Great job, little helpers. You can put your hammers down. Now we just need our story tools. Yep, we have everything we need. Okay. So, today's true story from the Bible begins with Jesus. One day, an important teacher invited Jesus to his house for dinner. Many people came to the dinner and they were around the table with Jesus, eating and talking. Then, a woman who was not invited walked in carrying a bottle of perfume. This woman had made a lot of wrong choices, so the important teacher did not think she should be at the dinner. But she had heard that Jesus was going to be there. She knew Jesus loved her, and she wanted to see him. The woman went to Jesus and started crying. <laughs> she was crying because she knew Jesus loved her no matter what. The woman was so thankful that Jesus loved her that she wanted to do something special for him. So she washed Jesus' feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. She poured a special perfume on his feet because she loved Jesus so much and was so thankful for him. The important teacher was <gasps> so surprised. He thought Jesus should stay away from the woman. He said, Jesus? You don't know what she's done. But Jesus did know everything the woman had done. And he knew how sorry she was. He could see how much the woman loved him. So Jesus smiled at her and said, Woman, you are forgiven. Now go in peace. Jesus forgave the woman for the bad choices she'd made. And he loved her anyway. Jesus loves you no matter what too. There is absolutely nothing you could ever do to make Jesus stop loving you. Jesus loves you, and he wants to be your friend forever. Hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who loves you? Jesus loves me. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who loves you? Jesus loves me. That's the truth, friends. Adios. So there's your story, and it's all true. Jesus loved the woman no matter what, and Jesus loves you and me too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, Jesus forgave the woman even though she had done wrong things. Jesus loved her no matter what. Jesus loves and forgives us too, no matter what. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! Jesus loves and forgives me, so I can love and forgive others too. 
Even though I am mad about the mess, I love Luca and I forgive him. And I definitely want him at the hearts party. See you next time. Bye! kids I'm Erica and I can't believe it's already week four in February we are finishing up our month of learning about the topic of respect do you remember what respect is we're defining respect as showing others they are important by what you say and do Jesus set a great example for us and so um, we can learn a lot from him and what and uh, the Bible stories that we read about him because he did a great job respecting others and really loving them well. Our bottom line for today is to remember that God is most important. When we put him most important, it helps us to love and respect others very well. Our memory verse for uh, this month has been in Luke 6, 31. Do to others as you want them to do to you. It's a great verse to remember and to think about um, when things are hard or when things come up at school or at home. And so I hope that you'll memorize this verse and um, remember it so that when hard things happen, you have that to look back to. Um, In just a few seconds, we're going to show some slides with some discussion questions. Feel free to pause the video and Take some time to read them out loud and discuss them with your family. It's a great way for you to encourage each other as we all try to be more like Jesus. If you have any questions or if you need anything, please let us know. I hope that you have had a great um, week and a great time learning about respect this month. We'll see you soon.
continue forward with caution. What's going on? Turn left. Uh, I'm going to the grocery store. Then why are you here? I'm using my GPS. Turn left. Turn left to pass in front of desk. Uh, surely you could have started this in the car. Why would I do that? This thing does all of the stuff for you. I mean, this takes a, a load of effort off of my plate that I could use doing other things. Like what? I don't know, watch TV probably. Turn left. Turn left. Turn left. <laughs> Rerouting. It doesn't even know where you're going. When has GPS ever steered you wrong? Literally a third of the time I use it. Turn right. Walk forward through the wall. C come on, I'll, I'll drive you to the store. No! I want to do this myself. With the GPS. With the GPS! I don't know what you expect to happen. I will reach my destination. Yeah. Reaching destination. Come on, Brandon. You just have to accept the fact that... Hey, I got nutty buddies. What? GPS, man. Yeah. I know. Oh, hello everyone, I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And this is the So and So Show. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Come Hold on. on. I know, I know, I know we're shooting. Sorry, Hold on everybody. one second, I'm sorry. Hello? Yes, this is he. What? You gotta be kidding me. Really? No, no, that, that, that's, that's great to hear. Oh. Thank you so much. No, you won't regret this. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like good news, huh? The best news, you'll never guess. Uh, uh, yeah, you won the lottery. Never. Uh, they're bringing back PB Crisps. Better. Oh. You are now looking at a brand new parking attendant. Uh, wow. Oh. <laughs> oh man, all right, don't cry. <laughs> Woo! Okay, this is what you were excited about? Of course. Ever since I was a young boy, I had one dream. To be a parking attendant? No, to dunk a basketball. Oh. But since I can't dunk a basketball, maybe I can tell basketball players where to park! Uh, I gotta go! Okay. <laughs> no, wait, but the show! No, 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 I'll be back! I'll be back! I'll be back! Oh, good, you're back. I, I was just staring into the middle distance. H how did it go? The power. <laughs> what are you talking about? Brandon, have you ever been in a position where you told someone to do something and they just did it? As your co-host, very rarely. It was incredible! I tell people where to park and they just go there and they park. They'd wave at me and I'd tell someone they couldn't go down the aisle! And then they'd just move along. Yeah, like a parking attendant does. Just imagine what I could do with this power. I could go beyond directing people in a parking lot. <laughs> I'll be back! No, this is... <laughs> I'll be back! Yeah! <laughs> We need to clean up on aisle five. Hey, move along, everyone. There is nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. You can do better than that. Give me five more miles. Come on, come on. Feel it. You, stop boogieing. You're scaring everyone. You. More boogieing! Come on! 
All right, so back to what we were talking about before. I, I don't know that being a parking attendant is about power. It's, I mean, it's not all about you. Are you kidding me? No. No. With a vest like this, what else could it be about? I don't know, helping other people, uh, making sure that no one gets hurt and parking stays orderly. No, it can't be about that. It's gotta be about me. Okay, <laughs> well, since you're back, I think it's probably time for- Sorry, Brandon. I hate to interrupt you, but there's a segment crossing, hmm? Coming through, come on through, Bible story time with Kellen. Come on through, Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys. Hey Kellen, like my new outfit? It's eye catching. That's the idea. What's up this week, Kellen? Well, this week I actually need your help with something. Oh, what's that? You have to tell me who is the real deal. That's right. You two are the judging panel on our game show, The Real Deal, where we find out which of our contestants are fake and which one is the real deal. Let's introduce them right now. I am a Roman commander. I am a Roman commander. I am a Roman commander. That's right. One of these three is a Roman commander who had a very special interaction with Jesus that you can read all about in the book of Matthew chapter eight. Judges, it is your job to identify which of these three is the real deal. Great, I'll go first, because I've got the special vest. Go. Okay. Roman commander number one, where are you from? I am from Italy, but more specifically, latitude 41.902782 and longitude 12.496366. Roman commander number three. <laughs> California, my dude. Hmm, and number two? Rome. That's round one. So fellas, what do you think? Do you have a good idea of who the Roman commander is? I've got an inkling, but I'd love to hear a few more answers. Sounds good. Go ahead with your questions. Uh, Roman commander three, can you tell me a little about your experience meeting Jesus? <laughs> of course. It was extremely dope. I saw him at the mall. You saw Jesus at the mall? Totally. He was shopping for a new pair of shoes, sandals specifically, and at the Birkenstock store. And you know, he asked me my opinion, and I, you know, told him the truth. They're the best in the biz. Huh. Uh, Roman Commander Two, what about you? We met in Capernaum. I heard he was going to be in town and I needed his help. When I found him, I said, Lord, my servant lies at home and can't move. He is suffering terribly. What did Jesus say when you told him about your servant, Roman Commander One? Oh, excellent question. He said, mix together two cups of vinegar with uh, ha half a cup of honey and approximately one fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper and my servant would be as good as new. Yeah. No, that's not what Jesus said. When I told him my servant was sick, he said, shall I come and heal him? Which really took me by surprise. Why would it? Well, what you would know if you were the Roman commander is that Jesus, as a Jewish person, wasn't supposed to enter the home of anyone who wasn't Jewish. Right, but Jesus showed how much he cared for my servant, even though he had never met him. So did Jesus come to your house? Roman Commander Three? Totally. We played um, Subway Surfer for hours. Dude's got some serious skills. Oh. Um, actually, I'm sorry. That, that's not what happened. Here's the truth. When Jesus said he would heal my servant, I knew two things. One, I was not worthy to have this man under my roof. His spirit of giving was incredible. And two, he didn't even need to be under my roof. All he had to do was say my servant was healed, and it would be done. 
Um, excuse me, uh, but what you're talking about isn't scientifically possible. Well, not possible for most people, yes. But Jesus. Listen, I'm in charge of people, you know? Soldiers obey my orders. I tell one go, and he goes. I tell that one come, and he comes. But Jesus' power is so much greater than mine. His word travels farther and faster than mine could ever. What happened next? Well, that's what I told Jesus. I told him I knew all he had to do was say the word. And when he heard this, he was amazed. He said to those following him, In Israel, I have not found anyone whose faith is so strong. He said that about me. Wow, what a compliment. Oh, number three, you're supposed to still be pretending. Oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> totally. I remember this happening. Continue number two. Well, after that, Jesus told me to return home. It would happen as I believed it would. And when I got home, my servant was healed. Just like Jesus said. Uh, Commander One, do you have anything to add? Uh. <clears throat> uh, my hypothesis, I would have to say, if you consider all of the factors and variables on the particular occasion regarding the person in question, then I... No. No, I do not. All righty, fellas. Are you ready to make your final decision? Hmm. Oh. Uh, I mean, number one seems very smart. And number three seems fun to hang out with. Uh, but I think that we both know uh, it's Roman, Roman Commander, Commander number three, two. two. Will the real deal please stand up? <laughs> Thank you all for letting me share my story. The pleasure was all ours. Great job, you two. You figured out which one was the real deal. This Roman commander showed Jesus the ultimate respect. He humbled himself and he asked for help. And he respected Jesus by believing how powerful he was. He was sure that Jesus could heal his servant with just a word. And we're still talking about that commander's faith today. That's all I got. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Kellen. Well, uh, my parking powers seem pretty puny presently. Yeah, but your alliteration <laughs> powers, though. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, but you're right. We might be good at a lot of things, even great. We might even be in charge of something, but nothing compares to what God can do. Precisely. I'm going to give you a break from saying all those P words because it's time to reveal the question. Ah. Uh. Oh, okay, here we go. The question of the day is, how do you show respect to God? Yeah, one way you can show God respect mm. is by coming to him when you need help. When, when you ask God for help, it shows that you believe that he can help you. Uh, you can respect God by respecting others too, because God loves them. You respect God by looking out for those that need your help. Uh, or those who need a freshly opened parking spot. Oh, no, you're speaking my language. <laughs> do you have to go back to your parking lot job right now, or? Uh, you know, I. I I think I'm fine. Okay. The power really went to my head, you know? So maybe I'll just let other people park themselves. <laughs> Whoop! Okay, never mind. I gotta go. All right. uh, until next time, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this was the So and So Show. Yeah. We'll see you soon. All right, I'll be back in a bit. All right. Well, I was talking to them. Oh, sorry. I'll, oh, well, I'll see you soon, too. All right. Feel the beat. Uh huh. To the traffic man. Another head opener. <laughs> and the lawnmower. That's a lot of beans cutting the pizza. Now you get a slice. Mm. <laughs> Great message today. So I just want to highlight a couple things. Um, in our story today, this was a person, this Roman commander that was important. He was successful. He was in charge of a lot of people. 
And when it came down to it, he knew that God was the most important. So our message today about remembering that God is the most important, I think that's important for all of us. Uh, It's important for you, kids, parents, it's important for me, is to remember that God's important. And and that's not just when we're struggling. Sometimes we'll we'll naturally reach out to God. But when things are going well, are we praising God and we're making him the most important? Um, And this Roman commander knew this. And so that's why he reached out to Jesus. And I hope that you know that. Um, And I just want to encourage you to put God the most important in your life. So if you love sports or school or music or your friends, those are all good things. And I believe God gives those things to us. But we've got to put God above those things. So spend time this week. Whatever that looks like for you is to make God the most important thing in your life. Um, You won't regret that. It's the best decision you'll ever make. Uh, And just start following him and saying, God, what do you want me to do? You are the most important And if you see my shirt here, it says Next Level, Grow, Serve, and Share. And this month we've been doing our Next Level group, uh, and this one is called Serve. And we've been talking about why is it important to serve others, and what does Jesus say about serving? And I think that's so important because when we're listening to God, we're praying regularly, we're reading our Bible to grow close to Him through His Word, and we're just thinking about God, we're just being in His presence. He will change what we do. Um, and we will take our faith to the next level. So I want you to think about what would that look like for you to do this week and then on throughout your life. I'd love to support you in that. If you have prayer requests, reach out to our prayer, uh, the text in line, which is 360-552-7794. Love to hear any prayer requests. If you're wanting to follow Jesus and take your faith to the next level, I'd love for you to message in and hear that. Uh, But we're here to walk along with you and be excited to do that. So This is the last week in February. We hope you join us next week uh, for the first week in March and a new theme, uh, whether that's in the building or again online. We'd love to see you and walk with you in faith. So have a great week. See you later, Ridge Kids.